What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Bible Wisdom. Um, I just wanted to make a kind of a long video on rewards. I wanted to kind of go through rewards and really just, um, I think, go through an important topic about rewards. You might hear my daughter crying in the background. Uh, sorry about that. My wife is in there with her. Uh, I think they're just uh, she's wanting something or something like that so anyway that's a disclaimer but um, so I'm just grabbing the Bible here and I wanted to start off with um, it really starts in Revelation 2 and <clears throat> basically in Revelation 2, um, Jesus starts to uh, kind of go through um, some of the different uh, critiques that he has uh, for the church. He, he just has different things that we need to work on. Um, and there's different debates about what time period this is written into. Uh, is this a church, churches? Uh, back in the day or is this uh, a church a group of churches in the future before the tribulation and um, I'm not gonna really comment on that but um, I just kind of wanted to go through these different rewards and I think this will be helpful for us because we need to um, just make sure that we are living right according to the Word of God, I think that um, as Christians, as I've said in other videos, you know, as Christians, we can really just, uh, you know, not really take Christianity seriously or not really take God seriously. And we can think like, oh, you know, I believe in Jesus, so I'm good. And especially, you know, when there's a lot of teaching out there that you know, all you have to do is believe and, you know, they may not tell you to get baptized or they they don't say any of that is necessary for salvation. And I do believe that someone can be saved without necessarily being baptized. But, um, you know, there's definitely things that we need to be doing. So I'm going to start off uh, Revelation chapter two. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Ephesus. This is the message from the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven gold lampstands. I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work, your patience, your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles, but are not. You have discovered they are liars. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. But this is in your favor. You hate the evil deeds of the Nicolaitans just as I do. Anyone who ha with ears to hear listen must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches to everyone who is victorious i will give fruit from the tree of life in the paradise of god so the first reward here is the fruit of the tree of life in the paradise of god and so um you know these are definitely i think we need to get into that mindset of you know, I want a reward, you know, instead of just thinking, you know, oh, I'm going to heaven and, you know, hey, that's it, you know, but getting into that mindset of, OK, what do I need to do to get a reward and what are the rewards? And so the first reward is eating from the tree of life in the paradise of God. And so what does Jesus want us to do right here? Um, he wants us to return to our first love and return to loving Jesus and loving others, you know, and 
definitely, you know, when you start walking with Jesus, you might have more of a excitement maybe, but as you continue to walk, you know, maybe the walk loses its luster. Uh, maybe luster isn't a good word, but you know, it loses its, its excitement. And so Jesus is saying here that he wants us to return to the first things that we used to do. Um, that's how I've heard it described is, you know, continue doing your first works, whether that be you were giving a lot, you were giving to the poor or you were just showing love to people. It could be as simple as saying hi, saying like, hello, you know, when walking by someone or it could be showing love to um, someone that, you know, um, you just, uh, you know, uh, really like or uh, showing love to your spouse or showing love to Jesus by maybe prayer a lot or reading the Bible a lot or going to church or just um, keeping the commands. You know, that's how one of the ways that Jesus says how we show love to Jesus is um, if he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And to me, that's one way to show love for Jesus is to keep his commandments. And so um, the first reward that we want to get is to eat from the tree in the paradise of God. Okay, let's keep on reading. Um, write this letter to the angel of the church in Smyrna. This is the message from the one who is first and the last, who is the first and the last, who was dead but is now alive. I know about your suffering and your poverty, but you are rich. I know the blasphemy of those opposing you. They say they are Jews, but they are not because their synagogue belongs to Satan. Don't be afraid of what you are about to suffer. The devil will throw some of you into prison to test you. You will suffer for 10 days. But if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Whoever is victorious will not be harmed by the second death. So there's two rewards in there. It was not being harmed by the second death and also giving us the crown of life. You know, um, I think this is not necessarily uh, saying that you won't have eternal life, um, but it's about a crown of life. But I think it, to me, it means you get life, um, but also you get a crown. But it more it sounds to me more of like an analogy to say that he will give you life um, and you will also be victorious over the second death. So that's the second uh, reward is victor victory over the second death and also the crown of life. And so what does he tell us to do? He says, um, be faithful until death. Be, uh, he says, but if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. And so um, I've heard a translation say, be faithful until death, meaning we are faithful to Jesus, where we remain Christians and good Christians until we enter heaven, until we pass away and go into uh, life if the rapture doesn't come. Um, and so. You know, um, that's what we Jesus is expecting of us is not to just say, oh, I'm a Christian today. But tomorrow you're saying, you know, oh, I don't know if there's a God or I don't believe. And of course, there's compassion for that. You know, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But clearly here, God is saying that he wants us to continue to be Christ followers, even when facing death or even until death. But also, if in the face of death, you know, maybe you somehow get some sort of um, uh, situation where you're facing death, Jesus is wanting us to do our best in, you know, still remaining, you know, uh, 
uh, near and and still uh, remaining Christian. Okay, let's read on. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Pergamum. This is the message from the one with the sharp two-edged sword. I know that you live in the city where Satan has his throne, yet you have remained loyal to me. Wow, it's clearly that Satan has a literal throne here, uh, you know, somewhere on the earth. You know, maybe it's not visible, but uh, that's interesting. But anyway, uh, maybe not in a good way, but still it's like, you know, the enemy, you know, somehow has a throne or something. Okay, but anyway, uh, you refused to deny me even when Antipas, my faithful witness, was martyred among you in their in among you there in Satan's city. But I have a few complaints against you. You tolerate some among you whose teaching is li like that of Balaam, who showed Balak how to trip up the people of Israel. He taught them to sin by eating food offered to idols and by committing sexual sin. In a similar way, you have some Nicolaitans among you who follow the same teaching. Repent of your sin, or I will come to you suddenly and fight against you, a fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what this, what he is saying to the churches. To everyone who is victorious, I will give some of the manna that it has been hidden away in heaven. I will give to each one a white stone, and on the stone will be engraved a new name that no one understands except the one who receives it. So clearly the reward here is a stone with a new name written on it that no one knows except the one you who receives it. And then also he said manna, the hidden manna. You know, if you ever wondered, uh, you know, I wonder what manna tasted like or what did it look like? Well, apparently there's hidden manna still uh, available for the tasting. And uh, I think some of uh, the descriptions of manna said it tastes kind of like honey. Uh, but those are the next rewards. And um, yeah, that's a, a third reward. I would say that's number three on this list is uh, hidden manna and also um, a stone engraved with a new name. And so um, what is he telling us to do in this passage? He's saying, um, one, like I kind of make a few videos about this is, you know, repent of committing sexual sin and also idol worship or food offered to idols. Um, maybe it, depending on where you are in the world, you know, I don't know if the idol thing will apply to you. Um, but also, you know, definitely what applies to us these days is you know committing sexual sin and so clearly he's saying that there's a teaching out there that is saying you know oh it's okay to commit sexual sins you know um it could be kind of in the grace movement where uh you know not all of the grace movement I, you know i like the grace movement but um you know the perverting of grace where it says you know oh it's okay to commit sexual sins you know, it's okay to, uh, you know, sleep around or, you know, touch a little bit or, you know, um, pornography, uh, you know, uh, just other sexual sins that I may, I may not have said, um, you know, clearly Jesus is saying, you know, to the church, you know, these are believers. Uh, he's saying that, you know, stop committing sexual sin. And so uh, that's a big one right there. I would say even going as far as if you feel like you're in the category that you're not really committing sexual sin, I would say, you know, how is your lust game? How are your what you're looking at, especially when you're out on the road or out in society walking? You know, um, are you lusting after men or women? And, you know, uh, how is your heart? towards those things if you are not necessarily uh, committing sexual sins. Okay, the next one on this list is uh, verse 18 in chapter 2. 
Write this letter to the angel of the church in Thyatira. This is the message from the Son of God, whose eyes are like flames of fire, whose feet are like polished bronze. I know all the things you do. I have seen your love, your faith, your service, your patient endurance, and I can see your constant improvement in all these things. But I have this complaint against you. You are permitting that woman, that Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet, to lead my servants astray. She teaches them to commit sexual sin and to eat food offers to idols. I gave her time to repent, but she does not want to turn away from her immorality. Therefore, I will throw her on a bed of suffering, and those who commit adultery with her will suffer greatly unless they repent and turn away from her evil deeds. I will strike her children dead, then all the churches will know that I the one I am the one who searches out the thoughts and intentions of every person, and I will give to each of you whatever you deserve. I'm just gonna change the flip the page real quick. But I also have a message for the rest of you in Thyatira who have not followed the false teachings or deeper truths as they call them, depths of Satan actually, I will ask nothing more of you except that you hold tightly to what you have until I come. To all who are victorious, who obey me to the very end, to them I will give authority over all the nations. They will rule them, then rule the nations with an iron rod and smash them like clay pots. They will have the same authority I received from my father, and I will also give them the morning star. Anyone who with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Yeah, so you can see that there is an escalation of the type of reward, you know, um, and so you can see that there was just uh, it's a greater reward than the last one. Um, and so. Um, once again, Jesus has brought out to a whole separate church about sexual sin and uh, sacrificing food, uh, uh, eating food sacrificed to idols. So clearly, um, you know, he is saying, hey, you know, stay away from sexual sin, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, keep away from the false teaching of Satan. You know, and so definitely, you know, we are to watch out for different types of teachings that don't uh, necessarily align with the Bible. And especially when you're on the fence about sin and you're like, oh, I don't know if I should do this or shouldn't do this. And so, um, you know, definitely, you know, uh, making sure that you are sticking with what can be explained through scripture even though we know in part you know um we are to definitely you know uh stick with what's revealed and so what are the rewards he says um you know he will uh give us authority and even the same authority that jesus has right now he will give that to us and so uh, that's a huge one right there. You know, that's pretty big. And then he's also saying to anyone who is victorious, um, he he says that he will give authority over the nations and he will also give you the morning star. Now, uh, you know, um, I am not fully sure what the morning star completely is. Um, I know I read it in a commentary. I just don't remember it off the top of my head right now. So sorry about that. But you can look that up. Um, but he says that he will give them the morning star and also authority that the same authority that he received from God. So that's a huge one. And what does he want us to do? He wants us to obey me to the very end he says and so we already talked about sexual sin we already talked about false teaching 
And so um, that one is that. Let's move over to the last chapter. And this video is winding down to the end. But um, let's start with chapter three. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Sardis. This is the message from the one who has the seven spirit of God and the seven stars. The sevenfold spirit of God and the seven stars. I know all the things you do, that you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. Wake up, strengthen what little remains, for even what is left is almost dead. I find that your actions do not meet the requirements of my God. And some say, some other translations say, I find that your actions are not perfect before God. Go back to what you heard and believe at first. Hold to it firmly. Repent and turn to me again. If you don't wake up, I will come to you suddenly as unexpectedly as a thief. Yet there are some in the church in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes with evil. They will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. All who are victorious will be clothed in white. I will never erase their names from the book of life, but I will announce before my father and his angels that they are mine. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Okay, so I think we're on number six, I think it is, uh, four, five, six. But um, basically, you know, this one's pretty self-explanatory. These are all pretty much self-explanatory, but hopefully this video is just helpful for a recap. But, um, you know, he says that um, basically that uh, this this church, uh, we as believers need to make sure that we are meeting the requirements of God. You know, I think that's a huge one because, you know, like I was saying earlier in this video is we can think like, oh, you know, I have faith in Jesus. You know, I go to church, so, you know, I'm good. And Jesus is saying, hey, you don't meet all the requirements of God. And like I said, uh, the New King James Version, you know, will say your works aren't perfect before my God. Uh, and so this is kind of reminds me of Philippians where um, Paul was saying, I think it's the Philippians, but Paul was saying that, you know, many are professing Jesus, but by their works, they deny him or by their actions, they deny Jesus. And so this is like the book of James, where the verse in the book of James, where it says that uh, faith without works is dead. And so. Just because we're saying, you know, oh, faith alone or believe, clearly Jesus is looking for our actions in order to get rewarded, you know. And so the reward that we want here, you'll be clothed in white and he will never erase your name from the book of life. So that's the reward for this one is that he, you will be clothed in white and he will never erase your name from the book of life. And he will also announce your name before his father and his angels that you are his. And so uh, you will also walk with him in white and he, he will call you worthy. And so um, what does he want us to do? He says he wants us to repent and turn to him again. He wants us to wake up. Um, you know, and he says, uh, in the beginning, he says, uh, strengthen what little remains for even what is left is almost dead. So clearly that can mean, you know, um, it can mean a lot of things of, about actions or works, but I guess I can give some examples of like, you know, when you're going to church, you're not uh, greeting people with a smile, uh, but you're kind of frowning at people or showing anger or bitterness, or you're not forgiving someone. Um, you know, what little remains is like, you know, oh, you know, I'm a Christian, you know, and you're just like saying you're a Christian, 
but yet you know you have fallen away from some of the uh, or all of the uh, basic things that make up what it actually means to be a Christian so I would definitely do research you know there's a few good books that I can think of that talk about what it means to be a Christian and I would probably just research that topic of what it means to be a Christian of course the New Testament obviously tells you but you know um, you know a book may help in bringing out more understanding you know I think there's a uh, uh, mere Christianity is a is one uh, that I don't think I've fully read or or have read, but uh, it's actually in that stack of books behind me. But um, there's uh, a book by John Stott that I did read that was uh, Basic Christianity, I think it's called, and so uh, he kind of goes through what it means to be a Christian, and so uh, there's that one. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, write this letter to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. This is the message from the one who is holy and true. The one who has the key of David, what he opens and no one can close and what he closes, no one can open. I know all the things you do and ha I have opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength, yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me. Look, I will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue, those liars who say they are Jews but are not, to come and bow down at your feet. They will acknowledge that you are the ones I love. So right off the bat, that's one of the rewards is clearly the false uh, Jews, which maybe Jesus is using the word Jew to really just use the word Christian, but he didn't use the word Christian. He just used the word Jew, but I don't know. But clearly, he's going to cause the Jew, uh, uh, fake Jew, uh, or this could be used fake Christian, to come and, and acknowledge that you are his. But anyway, let's continue to read. Because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take away your crown. So clearly this is uh, what I believe and I think a lot of others believe is a part of the rapture is that, you know, clearly he's saying to persevere and he will protect you from the great time of testing. And so that's one of the things that we're supposed to do. But let's continue to read. Um, I'm coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take away your crown. All who are victorious will become pillars in the temple of my God and they will never have to leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and they will be citizens in the city of my God, the new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven from my God. I will also write on them my new name. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. So, as I wrap up this video here, we're almost at the last one. Jesus is saying that he wants us to persevere. Persevere means to continue through kind of trouble or hardship, continue in the faith, continue being Christian and good Christians. Um, uh, can We already talked about our actions, you know, lining up with what it means to be a Christian and he said um, you know you you have little sh okay sorry about that my alarm <laughs> it goes off I'm recording this on an iPhone and so uh, my alarm just kinda went off uh, it's a new iPhone but uh, I, the camera's still good so that's why I don't use another camera but uh, anyway uh, sorry about that but anyway, um, the New Jerusalem, so basically the reward, um, he's saying, uh, you know, one, we talked about that uh, he will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue uh, to bow down at your feet. But also he's saying he'll protect us from the great time of testing, uh, which many believe is the rapture. 
um, and uh, he will write he will uh, make you citizen of a person who is victorious who is getting the reward uh, he will make you a citizen of the New Jerusalem he'll also write on you the name of the city which is the New Jerusalem um, and here he says that it comes down from heaven from my God and um, he will also write on them my new name so this is kind of different from getting your new name you know on the rock but he's also writing Jesus's new name and Jesus is going to have a new name you know that's what the scripture is saying that you know that we're going to call Jesus by a new name um, and he's going to write it on their on their forehead anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches okay for sake of time I'll just kind of skim through that you know but the reward for that one is the new Jerusalem the new name of Jesus on you um, and then the rapture um, and so the last one is verse 14 write this letter to the angel of the church of La in Laodicea this is a message from the one who is the amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of God's new creation I know all the things you do that you neither are hot nor cold I wish that you were one or the other but since you are lukewarm like like lukewarm water neither hot nor cold I will spit you out of my mouth you say I am rich I have everything and I want I, I have everything I want I don't need a thing and you don't realize that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked so I advise you to buy gold from me gold that has been purified by fire then you will be rich also buy white garments from me so you will not be shamed by your nakedness and ointment for your eyes so you will be able to see I correct and discipline everyone I love, so be diligent and turn from your indifference. And so that's um, uh, one of the last things. There's a little bit more here. It says, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me and on my throne just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. So really Jesus here just gives you the ultimate reward right here. You know, this is probably the, the best reward of all right here, which is, you know, sitting on the throne with Jesus, just as he was victorious and sat on the throne with his father with our father as christians god and so what does he want us to do he says you know i know all the things that you do i wish you were either hot or cold um and so he doesn't want us to be lukewarm and you know there's some great videos on lukewarmness but really it's just you know you're not on fire for god or you know you're not uh, really giving a lot of attention attention to your Christian faith um, and so um, he's saying that these people are saying that they're rich you know oh I'm well off so I must be good with God and Jesus is saying here hey not so fast you know uh, you're not good with God because you know um, you know you're miserable poor blind and naked and it's understood here that he's talking spiritually you know they're they're uh you know not even their clothes it's past their clothes but it's going to their eyes you know blind and uh, it does talk about clothes being naked but he also talked about how they're wretched miserable and poor and so he says buy gold from him refined in the fire which means like testing or trouble um, and uh, buy white garments from me so you will not be shamed by your nakedness which is doing good works you know um, Jesus has already stated elsewhere in the Bible that the righteous acts of the saints represent our uh, 
attire or garments so um you know um he basically is saying what are, what are the rewards so he says you know you'll sit on his throne with him um and you'll also have clothing you won't see he won't no one will see the shame of your nakedness meaning you know no one will know you know the sins that you've committed uh you know jesus will cover you so you can't see oh you know this person did that oh you know i, I don't want to hang out with them type of thing um and he's talking about in, in eternity or just you know maybe in the millennial kingdom but wherever this applies you know um he's giving us a warning that he corrects and disciplines everyone he loves and so he's he's wanting us to be diligent and turn from your indifference um you know turn from just the reasons why you are uh not doing the things of god uh turning from your sin turning from uh you know the hindrances in your life that are causing you to not be victorious so as a, a conclusion in this video um we are just supposed to be victorious um we are supposed to overcome you know uh all these different things as believers you know clearly jesus is talking to believers that he wants us to even refine our faith and so we're not just walking in blindly and just showing up and just saying hey you know i uh, wonder what my rewards are clearly jesus is listing out all these different things that we could be taking heed to or taking you know uh, advice from warnings we can be heeding the warning you know paying attention to the warning and changing our life so um you know we should just pray about this um you know we hope that we can all uh start implementing these different things you know that's the flip side of waiting for the rapture is that we do have time to change but the other flip side is that we don't know when Jesus is going to return and so you know it's good to start practicing this now but you know um, hopefully we all have a little bit of time to um, you know uh, uh, change and you know we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God but God wants to you know redeem us and make us better you know and refine us like he was talking about in that last chapter and verse and so, um, you know, uh, we can do this through the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, and uh, we can add works to our faith. You know, uh, it's not that we're saved, you know, by good works, but, you know, clearly Jesus is calling our actions. You know, when I use works, I mean, the actions that we're doing each day to line up with what he is requiring of us so hopefully this video was helpful to someone um you know uh thanks so much for checking out this video uh there's also another reward that jesus talked about in the gospels he said to sell things that you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven uh and i think he's talking about just giving to the poor as well in general uh, that will provide you with a reward in heaven and so I just wanted to add that in there and so uh, these were some other rewards though that uh, weren't mentioned in the Gospels uh, that you know clearly there are some great rewards that we can get um, and so uh, thanks so much for checking out this video and I will talk to you on the next video see ya